I'd like to begin today with a haiku. I am so tired. Where did all my money go? My back is hurting. <laughs> hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here with Bishop's RV and special attention here today to solo and couples campers. This is one of my personal favorite small compact couples camping models or solo camping models. Um, and it's now available here in the Hyperlite series. I've seen this previously. Uh, all credit for the originator of this goes to the Imagine 17 MKE, but east to west, Alta, Surveyor, um, Ember now making a version of this. It's uh, Transcend even has a take on it. It's a floor plan that is gaining a lot of popularity. So we're gonna see how this one stacks up and I'd like you folks to chime in in the comment section. Let me know what you like about it and what you think should be changed to make it better. As we go here, I'm gonna point out some things like the fact that it is a Murphy bed model uh, and that opens up this little camper to give you what doesn't feel like a little living space. But here's kind of the interesting thing. When you get there, you could just leave the bed down. Nothing says you have to put the bed away every day. It has a fantastic direct facing entertainment center and this model, for as small as it is, it has no business having a kitchen that good. It has huge counter space, it has fantastic storage, and the travel access to the bathroom and the kitchen on this one is pretty fantastic. This is a short camper riding on wide stance axles that now for the 23 season have Goodyear Endurance radials, also new for 23. Uh, no carpet in the slide, although this is a brand new floor plan, so it never had carpet in the slide, but none of these have carpet in the slide now. Bigger air conditioner now standard. Uh, access to the roof potentially now a standard feature where before it just wasn't available whatsoever. Now it's got a couple of hiccups, like it's a short queen. That's a bummer, but I'm going to do that kind of stuff. I'm going to show you here's where it soars, maybe here's where it falls short, and I'd like you to kind of do the same thing on your own little scorecard in the comment section. Let me know what you like and dislike. We can feed that information back to the factory, and maybe next year they can keep pushing it forward a little bit more. In the meantime, if you like the fair approach, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Let's get started on this little guy, because there's a lot to find in this little camper. So starting from over here in the theater seat, kind of giving you the driver's seat version of this. Like when you actually plop down, what are you looking at right here? Looking over, obviously, um, toward the door side of the RV in case you hadn't discerned. Uh, entertainment center is a little high, but we're sitting in a uh, set of theater recliners. And if you kick back, it's actually really, really nice. That being said, if you do decide to swap into like a, uh, a high-to-bed sleeper sofa or a U-Dynet, both of which are available here in this RV, they made sure that they size this slide out bigger for things like a U-Dynet uh, instead of just a sofa or two-bench dinet. And I don't think everybody realizes there's a lot of people go, um, I want that floor plan, but I want it with a U-Dynet. Well, you can't just like, a, a true U-Dynet is bigger. So they made sure they left room for that in this one. The color palette is definitely approved by uh, the HOA there, uh, which I can't even spell. And you may notice, uh, again, I try to share the good with the bad. This RV has limited campsite window coverage, and uh, they're not doing themselves any favors, personally, I feel, by not including a window in the entry door. Here's the thing. That's actually a pretty easy fix. We've installed windows and doors for people. Uh, we've seen, uh, I, I've seen plenty of people DIY uh, a window install on their own. If you're fairly handy, it's actually not extremely complicated. But um, I personally respect people who are like, yeah, but I really prefer things done from the factory. I'm one of those people. I like everything being done from the factory and backed by factory warranty as much as I possibly can. For the 23 season, they got rid of the carpet. So this is extremely pet friendlier than it used to be. No more carpet. Uh, does not have vents in the floor. Apologies, by the way, for the little chunks of snow that have caught up in my boot treads. I've done my best to kind of clear those out. I'm going to have to go through after this video and sweep the RV out. I'm not going to leave that uh, just in here. I, I respect the fact that this is going to be someone's property one day, potentially like almost like somebody's house. And uh, I don't want to disrespect it uh, in that fashion. All the windows open for airflow. Slide side, the big panoramic window. Everything here opens for airflow. Has blackout roller shades that we're going to see in a few minutes in the video, along with the valances and the lambrequins, uh, which are the tops and the sides. One's a valance, one's a lambrequin anyway. Um, my point is, you can really block the sun out of this thing and uh, keep everything uh, shaded like crazy. You can 
keep it slim, shady. I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going for. I don't think there's even anything there to find, and I believe I just discovered that for myself. <laughs> <laughs> Little sound bar down here with an HDMI input, uh, some USB plugs, you know, your auxiliary input in case you got the old tape deck. <laughs> Uh, the old CD player that you want to plug into this thing, you know, for some uh, entertainment purposes, but neither here nor there. You won't have to worry about upgrading the air conditioner anymore because they've done that for you. And they have standardized this now with a larger 15,000 BTU air. So you don't need to, uh, uh, you know, deal with any sort of upgrades. Now, this is mostly a one room camper. So I don't know how much use you have for this. But if you own a different kind of RV, that is basically decentralizing your air, and that is re-centralizing your air. Uh, if you do have air conditioning that ducts through the ceiling like that, not everybody realizes that's actually a, uh, a little thing that you can flip open and closed. Uh, they've gone with uh, digital thermostats here, which I actually, this brand's been very good about for a number of years. There are still a couple using that old dinosaur analog thermostat, uh, which is just really a surprise to me. I like the power outlets nearby. You can't see where I'm pointing because my finger's off screen. The power outlet's down there. Um, it's an interesting position, though. Like, I sort of wish it was in the side of the slide box. Uh, but depending, like, if you get the U-Dinette, the back of the U-Dinette might actually sit up high enough where it may be problematic for that. So that might be why they didn't do it. I don't know. Um, regardless, moving on. We got the skylight up here. Now, the RV's six and a half foot tall. It's not extra tall inside. Doesn't have a barrel vaulted ceiling. Uh, any of that kind of stuff. It just gives you that skylight to make it look and feel bigger. Now, over here in the kitchen, any manufacturer who makes a version of this layout, there's always a janky, goofy little kitchen corner here. Oh, I missed a, a kitchen light. Sorry about that. Good news is we discovered it. At least, though, they're putting some outlets over there next to that refrigerator. So if you want to turn that into an appliance corner, that makes an awesome spot for like a toaster oven, coffee maker, I don't know, air fryer, I've heard some people say. All kinds of stuff that you could uh, do. You could turn that into like a little device charging station, I, I do suppose. One of the only interesting hiccups, but I'm not really actually going to knock them for it in this model, is that the control panel is right down here, down low. Now... My knee jerk was, uh-oh, that's in a bad spot. Kids are going to get a hold of that and screw stuff up. But then I kind of thought about it, and I realized that this is a solo or a couple's camper. This is not a big, bad bunkhouse. I don't know that it's really too awful of an issue if that uh, you know control panel is down there uh, a little bit. But now that we've kind of seen the general overview, diving a little deeper into the details here, if you go with the theater seat like we're looking at here, it does have that removable bracket on Dynofa table. And uh, each of those individual non-cuddle compliant recliners right there, that big center armrest console, uh, can fold down to give you, um, or well, they can lean back rather, uh, not totally flat, but again, uh, they're, they can recline independent of one another and they're basically wall hugging. So you don't have to like wrestle the whole chair away from the wall. And I mentioned that because not everyone still is doing that. Uh, a little quick look there at the Murphy bed. It is a one piece mattress, but you are physically bending, like creasing, if you will, the mattress to put it in the up position because it does not nosedive uh, into the pass-through compartment, like say like a Rockwood style Murphy bed. So kind of keep that in mind. That means that um, you're probably going to want to get some kind of foam topper to go with that backbreaker death wafer right there. If you go with some kind of big heavy duty mattress, it's going to be hard to fold and buckle basically. The kitchen storage in this model though, that's the thing. It's a small camper with a good size and feeling living room. That TV can pivot around for easy viewing, so it doesn't matter which of the two double Dinofas you're looking at unless, you know, you can use the front Murphy sofa and then get a, uh, you know, again, the dinette in the slide. If that's more your preference, like if you want to sit there and make, you know, work on a puzzle or something like that, you could do that. But my, my point here is the storage in this kitchen is fantastic. And I realized I never got low enough to take a look under there. Some extra household outlets uh, over there. This, ooh, I just had an idea. That is pancakes, bacon, and eggs griddle country right there, folks. Ooh, I'm suddenly hungry for breakfast. Um, I was, I don't remember how old I was. The first time my mom took me to, to Bob Evans. Now, I live in a small town in southern Michigan that has not always had a Bob Evans because we're a small town. And the first time my mom took me to a Bob Evans, it was dinner time. 
and she told me I could get breakfast. And I was like, what? That's okay. It's legal. Nobody yells at you. And she's like, yeah, they serve breakfast here all day. And I, I, I'm to, to this day, if I go to Bob Evans, I, I can think of maybe one time I didn't get their breakfast. And frankly, <clears throat> I wish I had, you know, you ever do that? Like you go to a restaurant, you always get the same thing. And you're like, I wish, you know, I want to try something new. And you do. And you're like, I wish I'd have just got the same stupid thing I always get. <laughs> well, that is me to a T. Why do we say that, by the way, to a T? Oh, man, I just realized, I think I just went on like a three-minute tangent where I didn't talk about this camper at all. I'm sorry. Anyway, you see the, uh, I'm going to give him credit for this. Basically, floor to ceiling, full uh, shower surround paneling there, and rectangular shower. So the elbow room is great. Now, the headroom, okay. But with the position of that skylight, I never felt like it was an issue. I felt like I fit inside that thing just fine. Um, but, you know, th that's one of those things. It's almost like trying on a pair of pants in a dressing room. Um, I can show you these cameras, or campers, on camera all day online, but until you see them in person, you just, you don't know, you got to come to a dealership like this to try them on like a dressing room. So come see our associates and see what size fits you. I don't know. And with the slide closed in road mode, this is what I'm going to describe as travel stop friendly, but not necessarily travel stay over friendly. Now, just to kind of demonstrate the point that with the slide closed, even with the recliner open, there's plenty of room to very easily walk through here. What I'm not suggesting you do is occupy and use the slide when it is retracted like that. Keep that in mind. And it occurs to me, I didn't actually take a moment to showcase the handy little USB plugs in the bean bucket uh, there in the armrest. In case you're curious, some of those who follow me on the regs might realize I uh, have recommended that they make that thing extra deep in case you want to store a whole bowl full of beans in there. That being said, I, I don't know that I would necessarily recommend that. But what I'm getting at, if you need to stop, you need to make a sandwich or get, get something to drink or anything like that, if you're going down the road, I don't know, maybe you've got IBS and you can't always wait until you get to a travel stop. You have easy, direct access to the bathroom back here. You know, that is a handy thing. By the way, IBS, I can't even spell that. The reason I say this is not travel stay over friendly and only travel stop friendly is because they were making this as short and light as possible. They did smash the bed close to the living room area. And what that means is the sofa is not able to drop down for sleeper mode, which means the Murphy bed is not operational while you are in transit going down the road. You do have to open the slide for that. So I hope you appreciate that I took the time and effort, even on a cold, chilly day like this, to demonstrate that for you. And if you're new with us, hit that subscribe button. Know that we're always going to go that extra mile to get you the good info. Now, pardon the snowflakes here. Snow, by the way, about 60% dust. So when you're eating it, you're basically eating dirt. That being said, I eat snow. Just not the yellow varieties. Also, never eat snow at a dog park. That's just some free advice that you can take with you from your Uncle Josh right there. Uh, but if you can look past the snowflakes, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at what this one has to offer here. Um, the, uh, oh, I just, I just stomped through a, speaking of snow, stomped through a snowbank, and apparently my pants were not pulled down over the tops of my boots, and now I've got snow in like my ankle region, which is just not fun or comfortable. Neither here nor there. You saw the specs, let's talk towing. Um, what's it gonna take to move this sucker? It's uh, around the 5,000 pound mark empty, just slightly under that, I do believe. I haven't double checked the specs here, but um, it has a GVW of about 75 and change, I do believe, uh, 7545 as I recall. What that means is that you can actually take advantage of the storage in this RV, and you can actually pack heavy, yet camp and tow small in this thing, which not a lot of RVs uh, offer that. The, uh, the trick with that is that technically, legally speaking, due to the GVW increase as a result of the greater, greater cargo capacity, means that we're, we're knocking out basically mid-size uh, pickups. You're pretty much in the realm of the really big class SUVs and half tons for something like this. That being said, with the wide stance axles now running Goodyear tires, by the way, the short length on that little stubby sucker and uh, the general weight, this for, for any, I think virtually any tow baggage half ton. There might be a couple that just don't work. 
it is going to be a comfortable fit. This is an awesome uh, kind of fit right here. If you don't want to uh, swap out and give up your, you know, your daily driving pickup or something like that. Now we're looking at a Salem today, Wildwood, same thing. I'm just gonna call it Hyperlite since they both do use that same phrase. They're very good about using some very fun worded marketing like best value, top insulated. This isn't actually like zero degree, four seasons tested or whatever. That being said, short of it being like super hard below freezing and staying there for a while, you're gonna be all right. Now you might notice they're using slam latches on there. They've got magnet holdbacks. You may have noticed that due to the Murphy bed though, it does occupy about half of the pass-through compartment that uh, a non-Murphy bed Hyperlite would otherwise have. But that being said, that's also what's keeping the RV a little bit shorter, lighter, less expensive. It's crazy how very quickly length equates to cost in this business. Even if it's the exact same trim package, making it longer very quickly jacks up the price tag. Um, wide stance axles on a short trailer like this, this thing is going to tow extremely nicely. And... We're getting that peace of mind and benefit now of the Goodyear Endurance radials that last year, they uh, they were not getting standard um, outside TV hookups right here as well. If I'm gonna nitpick, I prefer speakers that are mounted down a little bit lower. And with them having kitchen cabinets uh, on the opposite side of this wall, on the inside of that, if you used your X-ray vision like Superman, you'd be seeing some kitchen cabinets. There is space to do that. Now, there's something else I noticed down here. Uh, not just the fact that we have a heated uh, enclosed belly. These also have tank heater standard, but you see that white flag hanging down. You got yourself a gas grill cooker hooker right there in case you want to, you know, bring some of the cooking outdoors. You may have also noticed with no heat vents in the floor and no carpet and a, uh, you know, a pet leash latch right there by the door under the awning. This is an extremely pet-friendly camper, so your four-legged furry friends can join along in the fun. Um, unfortunately, I raised, uh, you know, I'm a person with anxieties, and I always wanted a dog. The problem is I gave my dog my anxieties, so he's got crazy separation anxiety, and he barks like crazy when we're not there. And I'm not one of those people that's going to subject my neighbors to that, so when we go camping, we do have to ask a family member to, uh, to watch my little doggo. But hey, you know, that's just uh, my life right there. Walkable roof, uh, all set up for one of those telescopic ladders. That's that horizontal black line on the uh, left of the camera prep there. And one other quick note before we wrap everything up. All of our, uh, you may have noticed like all the, the hookups and everything are right there, but this does have a single stink pickle depository. All of the tanks outlet to one location. You do not have two sewer outlets on this model. So like I always do, I'm gonna leave you links in the description to take a look at some other builders who also make this model. I won't promise that I've recorded every single one of them, but I've got four or five different brands that have built this model that I've been able to get on camera now. So I'd like you to take a look at a couple of those. Now this video or one of those, if you have a chance, let me know which one you like the very best and why. And again, what do you like about this one and what could this factory do to make it even better? What could they do to make it your very favorite one? Leave that feedback, we'll get it to the factory and who knows what they'll come up with next year. So until then, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. 